Let me just check. Yeah, it looks like I do. Yep. Lovely that you're all here in the room and, and online. I'm going to be going like this. I can see all, all that. Maybe I should have sat at the end of the table and then I would only have had to look in one direction. Um, so um, uh, welcome to the, um, uh, so uh, Nicole, you're recording, yes, fantastic. So uh, just to uh, observe local protocol here, uh, if you don't wish to be recorded, you should leave, but I hope you don't. Um, and um, welcome to the 81st monthly meeting of the Strong and Sustainable Business Model Group, uh, which is all about our evolution as a, as a community, uh, of which uh, I'll say a little bit more uh, over the first um, little while of, of this agenda. What I'd like to do is, is, first of all, just do my standard introduction to the group, because we've got quite a few people here who haven't been to a face-to-face uh, -face meeting either in a while or um, at all, in fact. So welcome to those of you for whom this is your first meet meeting. Um, and then um, we're gonna, I'm going to introduce spend a little bit of time just sort of giving you a bare bones introduction to the idea of the Institute. Um, and then I want to spend most of the meeting in, in discussion. Um, we're going to uh, introduce the platform that we have now available to have discussions, which is Lumio, which you can join now. And uh, Peter, Stephen, uh, Nicole uh, can uh, add you to that platform um, as you join it before we get to that section of the meeting. So that's, and so we're, we're gonna try to sort of do in a meeting type format, stuff that over the next month or so we'll be doing online as a community with a lot of other people uh, joining. So with that said, let me share the standard SSBMG monthly meeting presentation, uh, uh, which is, where's that gone here? There we go, so I'm gonna share that. Oh. So, um, this is our standard opening, perfect. Um, so, um, I, I wanted to start by just re-stressing that the interest of the Strongly Sustainable Business Model Group since we were founded in uh, beginning of 2012 and our uh, convener uh, of the group originally, Nabil Harfouche, has joined us here in the room today, which is fantastic, um, was, was really to talk about how. Um, was um, how do we do this thing of, of bringing about what we were calling back then strongly sustainable and what we've subsequently learned we can call thriving, flourishing, regenerative, uh, integral, future fit, uh, and a whole bunch of other synonyms that we've discovered over the last uh, seven years or so for, for strongly sustainable. Um, and it really is a question about how do we do this in, in, in very practical terms. So while we have a rather theoretical name, uh, the focus and interest of the group has always been a very uh, practical thing uh, um, going forward. So with that said, let me just uh, start by doing something that we've been doing for, for a while now. This is triggered for those of you in Canada who are well aware of the uh, Truth and Reconciliation uh, Commission report that we had some years ago, um, indicating that we should really recognize our privilege of being where we all are today. And what we've done in these slides is to uh, generalize this given we are people from around the world, uh, each in our own places. So um, we just want to recognize that, you know, part of strong sustainability, a part of flourishing is to recognize that this is sacred land on which each of us are privileged to be today. And the land, the nearby lakes and sea has supported human beings for thousands of years and is very rich in history, knowledge and tradition. And that we are privileged to be the beneficiaries and stewards of all that has come before on behalf of the seven generations to come and indeed beyond even that beyond our grandchildren's grandchildren. And we invite you to consider in your place how you honor and respect peoples indigenous to your place, which of course, for some of you will be yourselves. And today, each place around the world is increasingly a home to peoples from across the world, and we're each grateful to have the opportunity to be where we are today. So this is very much uh, a, a social acknowledgement as well as a place acknowledgement. We also like to do a recognition of the physical place that we're in. Um, this is the building actually that we would normally be in. We're in a different room today. Uh, this one is just up the street from where we are. So we're in a different building, but very close by. And it is actually a nice day like it is in the photograph today. So uh, this is actually quite a, a good thing. So from a biophysical perspective, we'd invite you to all think about, uh, do you know where you are biophysically? Do you know which watershed that you are in? Um, in which, upon which you are interdependent. So for those of us in the room today, we're on a, 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 the edge of a creek known as Russell Creek uh, that uh, 
the settlers ourselves, in many cases, uh, were part of burying that in the mid 1870s because we polluted it so badly and we wanted to get a, hide it. Um, I've been looking for the indigenous name for it, but I haven't been able to find it yet. So I'm, I would welcome uh, some, some information on that. And of course, uh, just in a very lightweight way, the, the delivery of this session today is interdependent on the place in important ways. And obviously, your key way would be the where, where the place that the sewer is connected to. We still use the, the watershed uh, as a way of uh, uh, helping us transport our waste without using too much energy is by gravity and for those of you who have been using one of the uh, key tools that this group has developed the flourishing business canvas obviously the watershed would be represented in a business model using the biophysical stops powered by solar powered ecosystem services so uh, with that um, uh, acknowledgement let's just move on to the group very briefly so uh, as of a couple of days ago we just passed the 1550 uh, mark and uh, our linkedin community um, we are uh, uh, perhaps the world's first or only, we're not exactly sure, group taking action to undertake enterprise strategy and to do organizational design action research from a micro ecological economic perspective. So the ecological economists, for those of you who don't know, are those economists who are systems thinkers. Uh, they understand the economy as part of society, which is interdependent with the environment and actually use that uh, in their theorization. Obviously, most economists are macro economists. They look at the whole of the economy. We're micro economists. So we're interested in organizations. Uh, we use systemic design approaches. So we're design thinkers, we're systemic thinkers, and we try to integrate those two uh, together. And we have a strong normative purpose. So this is not just research for the sake of research uh, or practice for the sake of practice, with the objective of enabling strongly sustainable outcomes or the possibility for flourishing. So hopefully uh, you feel at home. Those are all things that you all care about and, and want to, to think about. So uh, with that said, I'm not going to goals because those are obviously going to be evolving as part of the evolution to the Institute. But for those of you who want to just go and refresh your memories on what we're all about, uh, our wiki uh, there, uh, streams is where you can learn a little bit more about who we are. Um, and, and I should also mention that all the, the presentations from nearly all the monthly meetings since the first is available in our Google Drive and uh, for the last three years or so we've been recording the monthly meetings and those recordings are also all available in our uh, Google Drive so including today's meeting uh, the slides are already there for example both these slides and the ones I'll be presenting at the moment. So as I mentioned, um, the, um, the Institute is the evolution of the group. This was an idea that uh, our member and one of the co-founders, Peter Jones, pro proposed uh, back towards the end of 2016. And it's taken us a while to get it off the ground, but we are starting to do that. And I'll come back to this in, in more detail in just a moment. And I, I should mention that it's the Wiesman Center for in engagement and research in sustainability uh, that uh, at Wilfrid Laurier University who has uh, enabled us to get the funding that we're using to to launch this uh, process. Uh, we have a face-to-face a, a -face, uh, by invitation meeting in August at Wilfrid Laurier um, and the process we're about to start with the wider community all, all 1550 people we can't unfortunately have everybody show up in person in, in August um, is really to, as input into that and I'll talk a little bit more about that in, in just a moment. Um, so, uh, I should mention that both the SSBMG group and the Institute are part of a larger movement, as, as we would say, uh, a movement for flourishing enterprise. Um, and there are a lot of other people out there who either already self-identify or we see as being part of that movement. They, in other words, they're using the same sort of language, they've got the same sort of ideas that we have. Um, and uh, many of these logos will be familiar to you, some perhaps uh, are, are new. Some perhaps are a bit of a surprise, uh, but we're trying to bring together um, and, and have us all recognize that we're all part of uh, trying to do the, the same sort of thing um, and trying to support, uh, support each other towards uh, the, the, the idea of flourishing enterprises. Um, and of course, this is in sync and going beyond, in fact, the United Nations Sustainable Development Goals. Uh, and uh, so we see ourselves as contributing to uh, realizing these as far as they can be realized and uh, helping us move beyond them where uh, we need we need in fact better goals uh, beyond uh, sustainable development um, we have a number of projects of our members uh, a number of initiatives perhaps would be better to say um, and uh, again not going to go into these in any detail today uh, there are brief introductions on the wiki for each of these and many of you will be involved in one or more of these um, each of these projects has its own community and 
many of those people in those communities are all part of this, uh, the, the SSBMG uh, as well. So again, these are projects about how we, how we bring forward flourishing uh, enterprises into the world. Um, I also just want to mention that we're part of uh, some other communities. Uh, again, I won't go through these in detail. Uh, I know a number of you will be uh, at, uh, with myself and Stephen and Nicole uh, and Eric at the uh, New Business Models Conference in Berlin in July, in just a few weeks' time. Uh, and we, um, uh, many of us, are also in involved in the uh, Relating Systems Thinking and Design Symposium, which this year is in Chicago uh, in October. Um, so I think that's probably enough of all of that. So that's, that's kind of the context, that's where we're coming from, that's who we are today, that's the sort of thing that we've been up to. So with that said, let me switch now to, to talk very explicitly about the Institute. Let me just bring that presentation back again. Okay, so as I said, um, I just got some feedback there, that's odd. Uh, let me mute Gil. So um, our objective today is to, to engage and excite, and obviously you are excited and engaged at least to, to the extent that you're all here, so that's fantastic. Uh, hopefully by the end of the, uh, the conversation today that it will, uh, will be even uh, even more engaged and excited and, and keen to get uh, a wider group of people uh, involved in, in the process that uh, we'll be describing. Um, so really want today is a launch event. We're trying to begin the conversations and I know I'm monopolizing the conversation at the moment, but that will change, I promise you. So want to give you a very brief lightweight introduction to the project to develop the Institute. Um, I want to share with you a first pass of the why, the how and the what for the Institute. So for those of you who know uh, Simon Sinek's work, this is golden circle. Um, you'll notice when I introduce these, these are very, very lightweight statements that we're making at the moment. Um, and when I introduce them, I'm going to actually introduce lots of questions as well. Um, because um, where we are in our journey at the moment is, is really wanting to figure out what are the right questions that the Institute should be asking, um, rather than trying to answer them. So uh, a, a lot of the work that we need to do as a community over the next months is really to get clear on the questions. Uh, then going to do a very brief review of the project plan uh, for the development project that we received the funding for. Um, and then I want to start the conversation. Um, so what are the initial questions that you guys have, have got about the project, about the Institute, about where we've come from, where we're going to? Uh, let's start the conversation uh, just live. Um, and then uh, after we've done that for 15, 20 minutes or so, uh, I want to jump online because that's where we're going to continue the conversation after we all leave here today. and where other members who weren't able to be here today uh, will be able to, uh, to join us uh, online. So again, I just invite you, if you haven't already joined Lumio, uh, Peter, Stephen, uh, or Nicole will ex add you to the, the platform if, as you apply. And uh, I know I've got at least one willing volunteer who's gonna be online to kind of shape that process so you can see what it all looks like for those of you who don't have laptops in front of you. Okay, so um, the development project. Um, so, um, it was, it's been started by uh, members of this group, um, and so we have a, a core team uh, of myself and Randy uh, Saad, who's online, and Peter and Stephen, who are also both online, and Manuel Rima from uh, Wilfrid Laurier University, uh, who's not able to be here today because he's traveling. Um, and um, that core team has just occurred by happenstance. It's just whoever was interested in and stepped up to the conversations when we were first having these, these discussions. Uh, we also have for this development project, so not for the Institute as it will be, but for the development project, we also have a steering committee and a, an advisory committee. And you can see who's on those committees by visiting uh, the uh, page on our wiki for today's uh, meeting. Um, and again, those committees are quite fluid at the moment. So we're, if, if you have a particular desire to get more engaged, then that's a conversation that uh, we're very open to, uh, to having. So, um, as I said, this has all been made possible by the leadership of Wilfrid Laurier's Wiesman Center for Engagement and Research and Sustainability, or VERIS. Uh, Executive Director of VERIS is Manuel Rima. Uh, and he, if you want to know more about Manuel and his research on community psychology in the context of uh, organizations and, and locations, then uh, you can visit his uh, the presentation that he gave to this group in March of this year. 
um, and we sec secured the smallest Canadian federal research grant uh, from the uh, Social Sciences and Humanities Research Council called the Connections Grant, and that's what we're using to fund the work to the, the project that we, we've just uh, started. So that, for example, paid for the Lumio license and, and that sort of thing. Um, so the focus of the project is to enable the SSBMG members and others uh, in the flourishing enterprise movement to co-create some responses uh, to some key questions. And uh, those questions include, why should the Institute exist? What, how is it gonna work and what is it gonna do? Um, and uh, we'll come back to that in a little bit more detail. And what we are intending to enable with this project is so that Wilfrid Laurier Veris and other SSBMG members can use these responses responses to raise the funds needed to start the nodes of the Institute. And uh, we'll come back to this node idea in, in a moment because it's quite a, a non-traditional uh, idea. So here's the, the first part of the golden circle. So uh, the why. So our vision for the Institute is to enable the conditions to exist that are necessary for all life on, on Earth to have the possibility to flourish. And this obviously has come from uh, uh, these are uh, an interpretation of John Ehrenfeld's words, and John is online today with us, so um, hopefully this is a, a reasonable uh, representation as a first draft of, of, at a very high level draft. Now within this, we've got a whole bunch of questions, um, which are sparked by the fact that we have started a lot of conversations within this group over the uh, last seven and a bit years. Um, and within that, uh, we have a, a, a carrot, uh, which is that, uh, it's pretty clear to many of us that humanity and our organizations within uh, our society need some sort of inspiring, aspirational, scientifically feasible, morally defensible uh, future stories ab about why we exist and what we're here to do, um, and that those be better than those that are typically forecasted for us at the moment. Uh, so that's the carrot, that's the pull, that's the, the upside potential, uh, an attempt to try and summarize that. The stick is, of course, if we don't aim for something good, we're liable to end up where we're going or worse. Um, and so uh, if we don't act, then clearly things could get a lot worse. And there's a lot of mounting evidence to suggest uh, that things could get worse. And a lot of it is we actually know how to get better. We just haven't been applying it, which again comes back to the why haven't we been applying it? Maybe that's to do with we don't know how to apply the knowledge that we do have. And, and hence the focus on the how. So, so the gap here that the Institute is perhaps interested in uh, is there's still a heck of a lot we don't know to provide the advice to leaders, managers, and entrepreneurs to enable the outcomes uh, and impacts to enable the possibility. And we know that that advice has got to somehow integrate the local because we're all somewhere, uh, but it's also got to recognize in that advice that we're on a single planet. So if, uh, if we don't somehow square that circle, which has obviously been a challenge for us uh, over the last uh, number of years, for, and, certainly, and certainly more in some cultures than others, uh, we're, we're not going to be able to close the gap. And um, clearly there's a, a, the knowledge frontier, if you like, around flourishing enterprises is not to the point where we definitely could advise somebody on how to do it. So where is that frontier today and what's beyond the frontier? How do we define, what questions do we need to be asking ourselves in order to define and move that knowledge frontier forward? So the, the, the why is meant to be the pull that with, with these kind of ideas in, in mind. So what about the how? So how are we going to meet that why? Um, the idea here is that we're gonna accelerate the development and mobilization of practical knowledge, whether it currently exists or whether we create it, um, and that's of, of course going to be include innovative solutions um, that will enable all organizations and their stakeholders to flourish. So that's the, the, the very high level how that we're going to try and pursue. Now within this, we've got a whole bunch of questions. What are, what, what knowledge do we need to be able to advise uh, leaders, managers, and entrepreneurs, consultants, so that their organizations can en enable the possibility for flourishing effectively, efficiently, and gracefully? What knowledge do we need? What does that body of knowledge look like? What parts of it do we know already? And it's just, just a question of helping people apply that knowledge. What parts of it, uh, and, and sharing that knowledge, what parts of it where we simply don't know? Um, how do we build on what we already have? 
you know, there's a lot of transdisciplinary systems-based science out there. Um, there's a lot of deep indigenous knowledge out there. There's a lot of ethical and moral frameworks. How do we integrate, synthesize, and bring those two leaders and managers in a way that enable them to act efficiently, effectively, and gracefully towards flourishing? Um, what don't we know? And how do we do research in this, applied research, when the thing we want to create, a flourishing enterprise, doesn't currently exist? Because in our society and economy today, if you tried to do all the things that we think we need to be doing to enable flourishing, you wouldn't be viable, right? So the very thing we want to study, the very thing we want to create doesn't exist yet. So that's usually a problem for science. What do we do about that methodologically? Um, and back to that local global question, how do we respect local difference and recognize we all act on a single planet? What does that look like practically? How do we advise managers and leaders to act in ways that respond to that question? So these questions that I'm prompting here are questions that we as a community need to start to refine. We need to start to get specific. These are all very, very general. And the, a large part of what the Institute's gonna need to do, we suspect, is to undertake research that enables us to start to respond to these types of questions. So what's the strategy? So how, what are we gonna do? So the idea we have is that the Institute will be a planetary-wide network of nodes. So this is not an institute like you've probably run into before, which is usually a creature of a single host. You know, it's usually an institute within a university or an institute within uh, some funders, funding organization. Um, the institute arises by being a network of nodes, and that's to allow individual nodes to focus on place, right, on something that's going on in their place, um, while at the same time being connected to other nodes so that we can deal with things that are in fact global in nature, planetary in nature. Um, so that's the basic idea that we have for the strategy. We're going to be a network of nodes. The nodes will, it's not going to be a hierarchy, it's going to be uh, some uh, collaborative structure. And so of course that raises a whole bunch of questions which we also have to try and answer. How is all that going to work? Um, so for this network, What's the research agenda? What will be the relationship between that network, between individual nodes and the community and between the network of nodes and the community? And us, we are the community. We are the, the start of the community, the, the evolution of the SSBMG. How will we define success and measure success? And how will we col collaborate? How will we enable the collaboration? How will that collaboration be governed in a way that allows us to fulfill our purpose, fulfill our mission? So th this, this how, why, and uh, th this why, how, and what are, as, it, as you can see, very high level. And this is deliberate. We didn't want to walk into this conversation saying we've got all the answers. That's not the way to do this. We want to engage all of us, all of us in responding to all of these, uh, starting to respond to all of these uh, questions. So the objective of this development project we've got this small amount of funding for um, is to build community. Uh, so we're, we're trying to um, find our tribe, um, a, 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 a group of people, a community of people who have a shared sense of purpose, uh, that you have some connection, some stake in fostering the possibility for flourishing and who have a shared sense of the responses to those questions that I was just sharing, and indeed many more questions that we're going to have to come up with, um, that are motivated to work together towards this purpose um, and are enthusiastically engaged uh, in that. So that the, this initial development project um, is to build, is to start the process for building a planetary-wide institution of act, uh, and an active community uh, to uh, contribute to achieving the goals of the project. So the deliverables for the project, which we, we aim to finish by November the 30th, are a, a first version of these, th these six things. So we want to take that question, what should be the research agenda, and have a first answer that we collectively come up with. Uh, we want to have a sense of what is the evolution of the SSBMG? What's its relationship going to, to be? What role is it going to play? 
Uh, we want to have a, a, a framework for measuring, defining and measuring success. We want to have some sort of an understanding of how we're going to govern and collaborate uh, within the uh, institute as it gets started. Uh, we need some marketing materials because we're going to, the, the next step, step six, is starting the first node at Veris and other nodes we hope that people will want to do. And of course, that's going to need fundraising, which means we have to get out there and sell the idea, which of course, all the previous deliverables help. So let me just walk you through the project plan very, very fast. So uh, as I mentioned, uh, it was Peter Jones's idea that we try to move the SSBMG to an institute back in the end of 2016. Uh, with uh, Randy Saad's leadership, we secured Veris as the host of the first node. Uh, uh, their board said we, we'd like to try and do that uh, in uh, the fall last year. And uh, again, with Randy's leadership um, uh, and help from Veris, we secured this little bit of funding uh, in the last uh, couple of months. And we've been doing some project planning, which has led to today. So between now and the middle of July, approximately, um, the idea is to gather the input from the, the whole community. So that's why you've seen uh, emails going out and there's been posts on to the group. And we don't want to limit it to just the current members of the SSBMG. So there, if there are other people that you think might be interested in this, that you think might be able to contribute to this, then this is an open process. Lumio is an open platform. Uh, we invite you to get people engaged uh, and bring them to the table uh, so that they can contribute their questions and their thinking to, to this process. So we're very much um, trying to generate variety here. We're very much trying to generate um, a range of possibilities, which is you know, a classic step uh, when you start to design something new that you uh, envisage, you try and get a, a broad spectrum. Um, we're, we're then going to take a step to start to synthesize that input and structure it. Uh, and then, as I mentioned, uh, we have a face-to-face -face workshop of between 30 and 40 people that will be at Wilfrid Laurier uh, in August. I'm delighted to say that David Cooperider, uh, who is um, very well known as the person who started Appreciative Inquiry uh, and is also uh, one of the people that I would say started the flourishing enterprise movement uh, a decade or more ago. Uh, he will be giving the keynote talk at that event and that keynote talk will be live streamed. So on the morning of August the 14th, which is a Thursday uh, morning Eastern Standard Time here in, the, uh, here in North America, uh, we'll be live streaming David's uh, talk. Um, and um, the idea of this workshop is to, to get a more focused attention on all of the input that we've received from everybody. Um, then uh, following that, there'll be some uh, final deliverable development. Um, and I'm deliberately not being too specific about who's involved in this because we want to leave the possibility that anybody might put up their hand and say we want to get involved in this. Um, and then the idea will be there'll be a discussion about those deliverables um, at the SSBMG meeting in November. Um, and obviously we're going to be trying to do this transparently so there'll be other opportunities as well and then the idea is that we'll try and get all this wrapped up uh, by the end of uh, November if we can manage to pull that rabbit out of the hat. So um, on behalf of the team that's been working on this so far um, and I hope you're hearing that in my remarks so far and we'll demonstrate it in a moment by the rapid change we're about to make in the style of this meeting, um, that we're, we're committed to undertake this work with the community, with our community. And we're gonna strive to be transparent and to maximize possibilities for participation and leadership where those of you who would like to uh, get involved can get involved in a meaningful way. Um, and we also recognize you know, this is the first time certainly I've ever done anything like this, so I'm sure we're not going to get it uh, uh, as good as it perhaps needs to be, could be. So we want to say that we're open to, to critique and open to opportunities that emerge because of what the community brings to the table. So uh, maybe this should be called the, the current development plan based on what we, what we know today. So with, with that, um, let's open this up for conversation. For those of you in the room, uh, if you want to speak, uh, hit the button on the, the, the box nearest you so that it flashes uh, green. Uh, and I've been told that the mics in the room are incredibly sensitive. So when you finish speaking, mute yourself again, because otherwise basically we'll hear every little rustle. Uh, for those of you online, uh, feel free to uh, comment in the chat or if you're feeling brave, you can unmute yourself. Um, 
And Nicole, maybe you can, actually it's Nicole, Nicole I know had to leave, so she may not be here um, anymore, but um, um, so I'll, I'll try and, I uh, know oh she's still there. So, so Nicole, um, I know people have been starting to put questions in the chat, um, so, um, but maybe, maybe I'll let you review those for a moment while we take some questions in the room and then we'll bring the, 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 the folks who are on, uh, who, who are online. Uh, yeah, in, so in I, I just, I do have to cut out in about, five minutes so um yeah if there's any questions or anything in the chat though uh please post them and then uh we can capture them at the end excellent so in the in the room i've i've said quite a lot let me what questions do you have you you showed up here why did you show up what what, what were you curious about don't be shy Hello, and uh, Anthony. Yes, is, go ahead, Fyodor. This is Fyodor. So, when you were talking about the nodes, uh, you said that nodes uh, are supposed to focus on local places. I wonder if um, uh, you're also thinking about nodes that could uh, focus on different aspects of global work, or this is not part of the, the thinking yet. Um, I, um, I didn't mean to be exclusive of things other than place. So uh, typically I say group, uh, sorry, sector group issue and place are typically focuses that we see happening. Um, but um, nodes can make, uh, our current thinking is that nodes can, can pick topics based on what they, is useful to them. Beautiful. Love it. Thank you. Andrew. Um, any thought to organize it or legal structure as a not for profit, co op, other form of? Uh, great, great question. Um, uh, the, the short answer to that is that it's the host institutions of each of the nodes whose legal entity we would be using. So the, the, the network which is actually the institute, that the institute is, an, is the network, it's not the individual nodes. Um, we don't know w whether it needs a legal entity separate from the legal entities of each of the nodes and presumably some sort of a collaboration agreement amongst the, the institutions that are hosting the nodes. Um, that's our current thinking, but uh, we, we, that it's very early days. Hi, it's Frederick. Um, from legal structure, I'm wondering about institutional support and their potential cooperation. Friesman is in as far as the Shirt Connections grant goes. Am I right to assume that conceivably other institutions and other jurisdictions would also be able to apply for their own grants to try to build whatever marketing costs, whatever technical costs, um, and then, you know, heaven forbid, if there were ever staff costs, um, and, and, and is that the sort of vision that everyone has? And it strikes me as, as we can do this in a virtual way as a continuation of the, the SSBMG, only up to a point. No, I, I, absolutely. I mean, a big, a big part of this is that the SSBMG has been entirely voluntarily run uh, since 2012, and we've achieved a heck of a lot even despite that. Um, but clearly we have to up the game in terms of infrastructure. Uh, and yes, that does include some staff positions for sure. Um, you know, Nicole has been helping us this year animate these monthly meetings. That's not something that we can really do on a reliable basis based on volunteers as, as an example. Um, so uh, absolutely. And, um, you know, we're, we're, we, the, our hypothesis is that there will be absolutely people in other institutions other than Wilfrid Laurier that go, we want to stand up a node because we can see that working together as part of uh, a planetary wide network enables us to do things that we couldn't, allows us to apply for funds, allows us to collaborate more easily. Uh, so yeah, absolutely. So, I mean, standing up a node is, is quite a commitment. Hi, Anthony. This is uh, Colleen Carson out of Dallas. Can you hear me? 
Yes, I'm wearing we can. Hello, uh, well. earbud to hopefully uh, minimize uh, uh, noise. Um, so I have a question related to uh, the methodology that you're pursuing. Um, so just by way of introduction, I am the uh, president and chairman of uh, Center for Evolutionary Learning, which uh, is a non-profit that exists in 44 countries. We've been uh, involved with sustainability and flourishing projects for over 20 years. And we have, uh, you know, a lot of research papers from neuroscience to, you know, business management, academic uh, spheres, and so on. Um, one thing we have noticed by way of methodology, uh, and this is something that kind of comes through also in John Ehrenfeld's uh, flourishing book, um, that um, the reason why uh, most sustainability projects that were attempted at the global level have essentially failed uh, is because um, of organizational changes that were made without the change being made first to the individual. So um, we have added a, another circle to the three circles, economic, society, and environment. A circle inside the innermost circle is the individual. And our methodology is to start by transforming the individual, uh, recognizing the fact that if we don't change, uh, it's extremely difficult to achieve lasting change in an organization, let alone the society and the environment. So, um, you know, taking that into account, I just wanted to, um, you know, ask you, uh, what is the methodology that you use um, you know, for, for the individual transformation, essentially. Or if you have plans for, for such, uh, you know, change. So I, I, I think um, I would respond by asking you a question, what methodologies are we going to need? So um, the methodologies uh, that, yeah. I, I was just going to say, you know, and, and, and not to say that we should get into the, the, the depths of that discussion now, but we, um, we've, got, we've done some thinking on it as a community, I would say, but, uh, you know, our partnering with Veris uh, is, is in large measure because they also have the perspective that you've just shared. Um, and, um, yeah, I mean, you know, leaders and managers are individuals, so clearly what we do has got to have something to do with the individual. Um, how, what research do we need to do in that front? How do we do that research? These are open questions. So we already have research done on that. And uh, it's not just executive leadership and managers of teams. It starts with the individual, with the team member. And of course, um, the higher the position of the individual who undergoes such a transformation, the greater the weight that they bring to the organizational change. Um, but again, without diving into too much details, um, I just wanted to uh, make ourselves available to uh, you know, uh, help FEI and, and your entire network uh, you know, collaborate with you, um, you know, starting with that aspect, using the research that we have pursued, uh, you know, these past couple of decades. And uh, like I said, we have neuroscientists on the team. We have business academics. We have executives. Um, we have uh, doctors. We have, um, you know, there's quite a, quite a big spectrum of, of uh, research papers that we have come up with um, in, in uh constructing this strategy that starts with the individual and then expands to the organization. And, uh, you know, like I said, I don't want to dive into details and, and take up everybody's time. I just wanted to make you aware that, that we're there and would, would love to, to partner with you and, and bring whatever we, we can to the table. Uh, and we can, of course, take this offline unless you, you have additional questions for me. I just, just as an well, aware, I, I do. yeah. Th 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 thank you, and, and I would invite you to post something to the LinkedIn group to introduce all of that uh, amazing set of resources that you've just mentioned to us. Does anybody else have any immediate questions? I just want to respond to that, Anthony. Uh, the, uh, just from the, uh, uh, my, my name's Bill Craig, I'm the president of the Canadian Positive Psychology Association, and uh, I'm also involved heavily with, uh, the, uh, with the Flourishing Enterprise Innovation Initiatives and that as well, so it's... Uh, uh, but from the point of view of what I would call optimum human 
functioning, you know, there's, there's human flourishing as well. So it's, it's basically, so I, I support that point. And I, you know, we were trying to appreciate that there's sort of flourishing, there's uh, flourishing enterprises, there's flourishing cities, you know, there's flourishing leaders, but at the, at the base, there's flourishing humans as well. So I, I think the, the, any methodology would, would, would definitely be, you know, we, we, we would have to sort of consider those things uh, as we move forward from a flourishing enterprise perspective. Because they all they all fit together, and it's sort of some you know some of the work that David Cooperator has done around uh, uh, sort of what he calls uh, full spectrum flourishing, which is uh, which is around uh, you know looking at human flourishing, looking at enterprise flourishing, and then looking at flourishing from a, a planet or a world, and it's a, cir a circular relationship. And he's he's come up with sort of strategies that uh, uh, that uh, you know you can focus you know you don't you don't just focus on individuals first, and then enterprises, then then the planet. Uh, you you start to focus Focus on all of those, but but you use the uh, the bigger picture from a, from a planet perspective can really uh, uh, um, uh, he calls it mirror flourishing can really dictate how people as individuals improve as well. So it's uh, it's it's it's, uh, it's a great topic, and I'm, I look forward to uh, lots of discussion and sort of how do we include the the human side uh, into the uh, sort of the equation as well. Okay, we have one comment in the room, and then Simon, I see you'd like to make a comment. Harvey, in the room first. Uh, I just wanted to, you know, really echo what was said in terms of uh, how I see that also as a very essential piece to this, uh, really at the core of this, because I, you know, from my understanding that, and that you can't really change organization, you can only change organizations as far as the, the interchange that you make yourself and the, as the individuals within those organizations make. And if you're not working on that piece, you're really only going to get limited change within the organizations. And I know there's many methodologies in doing that. And I'll say one of the other things that's necessary is not just the inner work of an individual, but it's building resonance with the people within that organization. And, uh, you know, resonance is really a kind of an attunement where you're all sort of going further, you know, further together, you know, and and there are many methodologies to build this resonance, and it's it's not something that's normally it's you know it's not quite the same as team building. It's something quite a bit deeper, and I'd say there's plenty of spiritual work, uh, spiritual traditions that have practices to support that work. Uh, I'm involved in a, a Zen practice for many many years, a Rinzai Zen practice, where we have lots of. I just finished a weekend with that, and that was really the whole theme of the weekend. Of building resonance within a group and transforming the individual in order to to bring that into communities and organizations and and so that's something I, I'm very interested in I had actually made a bunch of notes on that to bring up at this meeting too so I really appreciate that that you had brought this forward thank you well, just Simon? just to respond to that if I if I may um, For sure. so that's that's uh, totally uh, totally true and this is uh, you know, uh, spiritual and meditative practices actually are, are critical to this piece. Um, Sales methodology of choice, uh, um, CEL, this is our organization, Center for Evolutionary Learning, um, is meditation actually. And not all forms of meditation are created equal. Um, so we, we chose a form of meditation that actually has shown to modify our human traits. So human traits, whether positive or negative, drive our behaviors and our, our thinking and our actions. And so in an organization driven by greed, for example, and immediate reward, uh, people bend their rules and so on. If there's a change, uh, CEO gets changed and uh, there's policies uh, from the top down and so on. Usually they have a, a temporary uh, effect but generally things return to the, uh, to the previous state because the people have not changed. So how do you change the people? How do you change the human traits? How do you, um, you know, make um, ethics integrity, for example, in this case, manifest spontaneous in the, each individual in the organization? So, uh, and, and Mahatma Gandhi said, be the change you wish to see in the world. So uh, we, we really, uh, you know, uh, took that to, to heart in starting with changing ourselves, members of CELL, and then going forward to change members of the organizations. Thank you. Simon?
Yeah, um, I've um, three points all this like to make time. Um, Maria and I have been developing what we call the Hollow Network. And this is a network of, you know, very much like minded partners for many different backgrounds, many different types of organizations. And as one example of what active work is going to be doing is we're going to be receiving and hosting an event with which so my economic network we already have a way of you know sharing our research that we're also divulging research comes out of a wider network and also maybe host events and you know nurturing flourish um, you know we now have the network of partners where we can do this type of thing which is why I mentioned you know the fact that we're hosting Fritjof Capra. So that's that. And also, um, the thing that Mira and I are doing, we're supervisors for a number of, definitely a number of uh, universities that I would like to invite and, you know, explore this because they're so connected with the themes. That was just me, very briefly. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you, Simon. Uh, Randy. You're on mute, Randy. There you go. Just getting myself unmuted. Thank you a little bit with you into my uh, Kaylin, you, you asked a question about sort of what what is our method? And if we, we think about sort of uh, the, the Institute's perspective, unlike your organization, Organization, we are not. We're trying to catalyze uh, and accelerate both the development and commercialization of the solutions uh, are going to help us realizing research that would be related to those solutions. Our goal is to help. Through providing access to expertise and to grow activities that various innovation solutions that are already part of our network, um, and that we will introduce new um, to understand where progress is being needed. And to provoke and help to build solutions can help to address the gaps that we identify. All of these different approaches in mind, it will be our interest to ensure that the experts and that these various approaches happens if there's an opportunity to bring the solutions into the EFDI and leveraging direct funding for um, opportunity to test and pilot, etc. Um, if there's opportunities for us to enable them through the system, and there isn't a method or approach that we um, support or, or that we're championing or teaching, but that's already have that have been affiliated with us, the idea of addressing the human side of things is recognized. And um, you know, certainly there's a need. Yeah, no, absolutely. And like I said, I'd like to uh, make ourselves uh, available to uh, you know offer whatever we have found throughout these uh, past two decades and and, uh, and share with the you. The methodologies that we we found that that works. Thanks. Uh, hi, Anthony. I'm. Uh, um. I wanted to just introduce, understand. Um,
that that you know we're working we're really and at the enterprise level it's a social system as, as well as the collection of individuals who are all of commitment and within the within and our I guess theory very fire um, more, more of a movement towards a, you know more, more of a mass move if you will across organizations I could um, organizations pretty much every Everywhere, <laughs> uh, everywhere and anywhere, I mean, that's why we're looking for a partition of different, um, uh, you know, countries, communities, and and research and, and different close to the QM movement. Uh, if, uh, That is, if we can approaches that you know, uniquely provide and, and and support the research for that, there's a progress line within the organization. Uh, the groups of organizations. All, all the people can connect, but if we we might think of what flourishing enterprise institute is, to at least the way I think the later use of the, well after total quality movement was well absorbed. Um, the, at that point, everyone had heard about it, and many organizations had incorporated. There were robust tools and consultants and advisors. And organizations, we got that stage uh, right now. So it might be a way of thinking about how, well, uh, understanding how we're thinking about it and the kind of conversations we have with it. We have a really explicit model for the theory um, the way that we look at the at working across the different uh, units of design and analysis and how we think about it in terms of uh, research and practice at that level of something like the TQM movement so okay I'll let you go back to that back to the next person thank, 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 thanks Peter and, and I'll, I'll add my perspective to that uh, topic I mean we We, we know that ability to meet and meet individuals and increasingly so. Um, and so we will have and why transform themselves at scale, you know, not Just one or two enterprises, but a, an idea that has somehow permeated those. And we've got of ideas and thinking um, that really people who have gone really deep on some very clever uh, methods and approaches and frameworks, um, which clearly EQM is the one we seem to be coming back to, which Have become incredibly influential. In 40 years ago, everybody thought that high was more low quality, that low quality was cheaper. And today, nobody believes that. Of the analogy between what we're doing and what. Uh, uh, we look at what the lessons we could learn from those types of of transformation that we 
could somehow leverage and build on. So with that said, it's about, we've got about half an hour left and I did want to get uh, practical. Ho hopefully means that there's lots of different perspectives, which we've only just sort of very started to scratch the surface on um, and looking for and expected. Um, and um, I hope that this gives you a sense of the asking questions of each other. Uh, and and also contribute making contributions, saying we know about the offers that would be useful. So uh, with that, I'm here from the audience, uh, Fyodor. Um, if you'd like to share your web browser, okay, sure. uh, and we're now going to do a quick demonstration of uh, um, Lumio. All right. So the idea is, as I mentioned, over stage one, uh, the, the stage one of the project, we're looking for input on a bunch of uh, questions that we we we'd like to pose to the community. Uh, and so Fyodor's going to going to going to model for us what this looks like um, uh, live, so that we can kind of see how this works. So, um, uh, so when, when you get when you get back to the office, if you're not already doing this, if you're uh, on online. Uh, uh, you go to lumio.flourishingenterpriseinstitute.org and you get a screen like this and it says uh, log in at the top or join group. So you click on join group. Um, you're asking uh, not to be before today so that people can see. I, absolutely. So, so Fyodor is, is not, uh, uh, you, so you can now join by entering your email address or by using uh, Google or Facebook. Uh, and then when he does that, uh, th there, there will be a delay because uh, Somebody has to go in and approve the membership. Mm -hmm. uh, so I am going to do that right now because I know that he has just done that, and maybe some of the others, others maybe of you uh, have already. Applied earlier. See everything. Let me get this. It's my. Here we go. Um, let me just get this right here. Come on. I think, um, yeah, please go ahead, Harvey, but make sure you're unmuted. Um, I joined Lumio. Yes. And, and it looks like I was approved, but it says the response I got was a Lumio team member. John, not uh, anybody in this, so I haven't quite joined yet. Yeah, that's the that's the initial ah, stage. I see. And then you, once you're in. So I don't see your then join you, request. Then you, then you if you join click request. on join group there, you see on uh, the top right on the starting a group, not starting a group. Joining click on group, join group yeah. now. Um, okay. Fiodo? Um, yeah, so I. Anthony, sorry, it's on Dean. Can I just ask a yeah. quick question? Um, of what is the purpose of Lumio? Can you give us some context? What is this? Thanks. So the, the, the idea behind Lumio is we need to engage the community in the discussion that we've all just started um, in, in trying to figure out together what all of our collective ideas are um, about what the Institute should be and, and how it should work. And so Lumio is a platform that will enable us, we hope, because uh, it's the first time we're using it for this purpose, uh, to have that conversation. And just, uh, if I, I may comment from me, it's uh, what I know about Lumio, which I haven't used so far, uh, but uh, I know that this is developed by people from Inspiral, which is a cooperative uh, a community started in New Zealand. Uh, and uh, they've been very um, aligned with uh, um, everything that we've discussed so far today. Uh, and they've been developing some uh, methodologies and technologies related to uh, self-organization in teams. Uh, so they use Lumio a lot. I know a lot of organizations that, and communities using Lumio. And we use CoBudget for our evolution leadership community. CoBudget is another uh, system developed by them. And we've been very happy with it over the last three, three four years. Um, so uh, Lumio, as far as I understand, uh, it's not only enabling communities to have conversations, uh, it, on, it also enables collective decision making in a very simple uh, way um, that allows for 
um, you know, action, not just exploring possibilities. Sorry, Gail, go ahead. Okay. So there we go. Sorry, Anthony, I didn't follow protocol there. Uh, uh, Fedor, there, uh, as, as, I, as I know many people here know, there are lots and lots of collaborative platforms out there in, you know, in a, in a sentence or two, could you say what stands this one out from the pack? So um, I, I wouldn't say that we did an exhaustive review of collaboration platforms with the resources. <laughs> Your sense the resource. based on what you know. Um, th this one recommended it to us because it, it seems both very straightforward um, and also it has this decision making component to it, which uh, we're hoping will enable us to reach consensus um, and um, uh, an understanding of, of where we where we don't have consensus okay. uh, in, in ways that um, other platforms don't seem to have. That's enough for now. Let's take a look. Okay. So. Um, Just a quick, a quick, a quick note from from me. I think it's a very important uh, as we as we talked about individuals and individual transformation. Uh, uh, to me personally, it's very important that this platform is developed by a community of aligned individuals um, uh, working on some extraordinary things together, uh, rather than a Silicon Valley startup uh, that tries to kind of uh, uh, create something for people like us. So. Yeah, that, th thank you. That, that was another factor that caused uh, Peter to recommend it and, and us to, uh, to go, down this, uh, go down this path. So um, this is the main uh, screen in Lumio. Um, on the right, you'll notice that there are a number of subgroups um, and uh, the, de the deeper conversations we're expecting to go on to in these subgroups. So um, we'll come back to that in just a moment, but I do want to highlight that what you see when you only join the top level group is not all that's going to be going on, okay? So um, the, um, uh, the, the first thing you see is just a few words. There's some attachments, uh, including the recording from today's meeting um, and some other uh, background materials, uh, which uh, we would encourage people to look at, uh, at at some point. If you scroll down a little further. Oh, actually, I think you may have to refresh your screen because you should be seeing some threads now. Just re re refresh your screen. Yes, there we go. Now, now you see the institute is on the left. Here we go. So um, you can see we've got some, some threads already started here. So scroll back up a little bit, um, Fyodor. So the first one is, is, um, uh, the, the, um, is where people can introduce themselves. Uh, the second is a conversation about the why of the institute. Uh, so you can see there's four posts in there already. Um, there's a discussion about what could be important for you as an individual uh, in relation to the uh, Institute. Um, and there's a number of other topics that are starting to bu um, bubble up uh, from the subgroups that are being summarized at this top level. Um, so we're, we're starting to see how this can work. We've had uh, um, the advisory committee has been kind of on here since uh, last Wednesday and we've started a few conversations and Pyodo is going to join one of those to kind of demonstrate, uh, start one and join one. Uh, so uh, if you could just go into the applied research agenda subgroup, Pyodo, and click on the right. Okay, applied and research the, agenda right here. And you say join that group as well. All right. And I will just, I, I also have to do approvals here. Uh, and I have, I'm afraid I, I, I'm, I'm hoping there's a way to stop me having to do the approvals, but at the moment we haven't figured, figured that bit out of it. So here we go. I'll just approve these at the subgroup level. Okay, so you should, if you now refresh again, and there's emails that you'll get in your inbox to tell you that these things have happened. You'll now notice on the left-hand side, under the Flourishing Enterprise Institute Development Project, we've got the Applied Research Agenda subgroup is now list listed for Fyodor on the left there. And you now see that there are three threads uh, that were summarized at the top level, but now you can get into the detail of, of these. Um, there's uh, one from um, uh, Nicole there. There's one from, I'm just recognizing pictures here. There's one from Sean um Gobi at uh, Wilfred at uh, Waterloo University University of Waterloo and there's one from Ondine on the flourishing competency model so um I'd invite you to start uh Fyodor I know you've got a lot of things that you think we should be 
considering a lot of research objectives that you think we should have for the Institute. Would you like to click on new thread and start a new thread? Mm -hmm. To start yeah. with, and then I, we can I, go I, into I, one I, or the other and make comments. Right, and uh, uh, just as a reminder, Anthony, uh, I was thinking about uh, using collective narrative methodology as a sensing methodology as an example of the suggestion. Again, I, I have a lot of things to put there, but wanted to start with that one. Uh, do you think this is the appropriate grip applied research agenda? Um, um, so, um, so it's it more may about be, um, it reflect on itself, um, not necessarily right. determining the research. Yeah. R right. So, so. Uh, it, uh, I, I was also thinking about this after we chatted yesterday afternoon, Fyodor, and um, it could go in both places. So um, okay. this, uh, this methodology that Fyodor's mentioning that he's interested in, uh, uh, which is a, um, a, a descriptive and narrative and self-reflective method, um, is obviously something we could use for ourselves in this conversation that we're having. So in that case, it's not really to do with the research agenda of the Institute, it's to do with how we have this conversation. And there is actually a thread at the top level. So if you go back to the top level by clicking on the development project on the left there and scroll down the list of threads there mm -hmm. uh, we actually have a thread called something like how can we have a good conversation in Lumio yes there we go right at the very uh, scroll down a little further keep going having useful discussions and reaching conclusions in Lumio so you could go into that thread uh, and um, add something there but at the same time maybe this methodology is something where, where there are things that are unknown about how do you deploy it? Um, yeah. How do you use it in organizations? So it could also be a research topic, something uh, where there's a research objective uh, related to it that we need to, that we might want to consider. Mm -hmm. Yes, yeah, sure, that there is this aspect as well. So, yeah. um, all right, so let me then go to applied research agenda as right now start a conversation about collective narrative methodology um so and i will not write a lot of things right now for the sake of time because it's just technical demonstration uh because i can always come back and add stuff there right that's correct and and the the owner of a post can always edit a post uh mm -hmm. later as i've understood it so i'm going to my medium article so this is collective narrative methodology that uh, we've been using for quite a while but just described last year and uh, I go back to Lumio and so what is the topic I want to discuss and let us say um, using collective narrative methodology to um, Sense the evolution of cultural narratives. Excellent. So while you're just doing a little typing there, let me. Um, you, you folks have asked some very legitimate questions in the chat, uh, and somebody just texted me one as well about um, why why Lumio a little bit more. Um, we, we do recognize that obviously everybody's on a whole ton of platforms these days, adding yet another one is like, oh my God, do we really have to have another one? Um, I, I think what we, um, certainly we know that the platform we have been using for the group, which is LinkedIn, uh, is not fit for purpose for this type of collective discussion. Um, it's really not possible to see the threads properly in, in LinkedIn. It's really not possible to follow discussions uh, on, on LinkedIn. So that's the reason why we didn't simply stick with LinkedIn. We, it's just not fit for purpose. Um, we are trying this out. So, I mean, this, this could all be a, a huge learning opportunity that this is not the right tool. And we discover that by trying to use it. Um, but we, we know that things like Facebook and some of the other platforms uh, are, are also not fit for purpose for this type of collective discussion. Um, and uh, to uh, Fyodor's point, uh, that, that we also know that those organizations are certainly not aligned with our idea of enabling the possibility for flourishing. Uh, so Fyodor, I'll hand it back to you again. Yeah, some technical question, uh, Anthony. So I created the post, which I will edit later to yeah. add some more details. Um, so yes. I'm trying to figure out whom to invite, obviously members of the Obliged Research Agenda. Uh, if I want to, to invite somebody, um, like I want to invite my mentor and um, co-founder Manuel Manga, for example, um, yes. who actually planned to join this call, but it couldn't. Uh, so um, can I invite somebody who is not yet a member of that group? 
Absolutely. And, and we would encourage you to do this. So this is, this is part of where, you know, if, if you're connected to a whole stream of research or practice or, or have an interest and you want to get other people involved in the conversation, Lumio prompts that proactively. When you make a post, you can invite other people to join, the, join just this conversation. And then obviously they will self, hopefully self-discover that this conversation is part of a wider conversation that's going on here. Panos. Can they join it? one conversation while not being part of the organization so like like have like external stakeholders kind of thing like being invited to a specific discussion um that is our understanding okay um that that not everybody has to be involved in everything so you can approve like for a conversation as a, yes. as a I, I believe topic that, owner or something i I, be, I believe that that is the case yes okay yes and we're, we're hoping that you know people who start topics uh, will obviously you know we, we, we're gonna we have we do have a moderator role uh, that's shared between Randy, myself, Stephen, and uh, Peter and Nicole at the moment. Uh, but that's, we're intending that to be really lightweight, right? We, we want the people who are driving the topics uh, to be, uh, you know, helping to shape those topics and, and have discussions about it. Uh, Can I make a comment about that? What yes, please. For, for quite some time now. Um, my perspective, you know where I'm coming from, from my, you know, governance perspective. Yes, yep. uh, the, la the last few years have been involved in like various networks of people, you know, trying to do, you know, values align, trying to do the same things. To me, it seems that we're kind of having the same challenge, all of us. How can we, you know, we might be values aligned, we want the same things, but how do you actually organize ourselves effectively and we actually do something? The fact that this platform, for example, has a decision-making, you know, tool is great. I haven't seen that before, but I, I don't think that will be enough. So when you think about not only networks of people, but networks of networks, it, which is what I'm thinking the FEI is trying to do, there's going to be a big challenge of how decision making is distributed. How do we make everybody on board? How do we hold people accountable when we need to? All these kind of things. And basically it's like a, you know, a, kind of a flag plus invitation for other people like, uh, you know, call, uh, call nothing that, you know, yeah, coming from the uh, evolutionary, having like 44 countries and all these members and, you know, the Holonomics Institute, how do you, how have you responded to this challenge? Right. And whatever you have done, we have to imagine that our challenge is like, maybe an order of magnitude larger, right? Frederick. Um. I think you raise a very important part, uh, um, concept and uh, also an important part of a research agenda. Uh, for this um, FEI, Flourishing Enterprise Institute, to function there, I think we also have to be extremely self-aware and cautious, A, for everyone's security, something that we should probably build into the role of moderators and perhaps you know, try to have a culture of the person starting a thread also acting as moderator. Um, but then we also have the research agenda about what is sort of a new democratic institutional form of sorts or a, you know, or a consensus built uh, research agenda institutional form or something along that lines. In some ways we're on uncharted water here, if we, the, the traditional research institute at my institute at York University, you know, we know who the boss is, and it's yeah, certainly it's not the director; down, yeah. it's the vice president of research. And uh, but but we're trying here with the FEI to do something quite innovative and new. Um, and we should probably also ask the people interested in governance to try to add that to their concern and their discussion. You know, try how, how to formalize without killing off the enthusiasm, how to network without opening people up to personal security issues, yeah. how to make sure we don't get hijacked, kiboshed, um, how to actually build in a positive way. Yeah. And, and hence, you know, we've, we've got that governance sub, subgroup uh, for, for precisely that reason. So we, we, we definitely, uh, you know, creating a safe space, I'll, I'll pick up on that one point. Frederick, that's yeah. clearly a, a critical to enable people to participate. So that's that's important. Okay, Fiona, yeah. back, back to you just to, to work through the questions. Uh, uh, Anthony, if I if I may add a couple of uh, just quick thoughts on that. 
particular thing because uh, I uh, my I had a pretty clear understanding based on our advisor advisory committee call uh, what we are signing up for. Uh, so just wanted to uh, maybe give a couple of comments and correct me if I'm not getting something. Uh, as far as I understand, um, you know, these questions that are being raised right now is exactly what we're yet to consider and figure out. Uh, we're building the plane as they fly it, which is how um, these kind of organizations um, can work in a way that takes multiple perspectives into account. And um, um, Lumio is just one platform. What I also sense, again, this is my personal assessment. Um, what I also sense is that uh, there are people with a lot of experience and pretty grounded in what, what they do in the, on this call. And it would be great and, you know, kind of, uh, there is some hesitance as far as, again, I sense to jump on a platform without further building relationship and understanding each other. Uh, because this is an online platform based on written text and how can I actually engage in conversations for possibilities without conversation for relationship, right? Uh, so this might be something to consider, uh, right? So if, uh, referring to Fernando Flores' um, uh, four types of conversations for relationship, for learning, for possibilities, and for action. Because before we make collective decisions, we need to uh, kind of go through some other conversations probably. Um, also, uh, the collective narrative methodology also is uh, one why I was kind of trying to introduce that because uh, before you actually start separate discussions uh, and it's very um, easy to quickly populate Lumion with uh, kind of either duplicated threads or uh, poorly connected threads. Um, so collective narrative is a way for people to uh, come for like an online World Cafe experience, for example, that um, I'm sure many, many are familiar with the World Cafe process that combines uh, multiple perspectives with the intimacy of small group conversation and the depth of the small group conversation. So the collective narrative is a way to harvest key insights uh, that keep the integrity of the collective. It's not one person's blog post with biased view of what happened. It's not like a bunch of person graphic dissertation that cannot be understood outside of that conversation. Uh, it's um, um, kind of clustering the ideas from reports of different groups and arranging them in a coherent story while keeping most of the language intact. So, and this could be something that would um, help ground people in more of an, under, of an understanding of each other's perspective, where people are coming from, seeing patterns, uh, like what are the theories of change that are present in this community? And how can we see the patterns, how they interact, right? So, and uh, then the threads that appear on Lumio would be grounded in the relationship that we've built and in the context. So this is just something, some, some thoughts and response to what was being discussed. Hope. So, thank you, Fyodor. That, that's, that's all very good. Uh, Randy, I think you had a point you wanted to make. Yeah, I, I um, wanted to add just a little bit in terms of context to make sure that everybody's on the same page about how Lumio fits in. Um, you know, Anthony introduced earlier some of the, the outputs or outcomes that we're trying to generate as, as a function of the project that we've undertaken in, in setting up the first node of the FEI at Wilfrid Laurier University, um, including the research agenda, the measurement framework, the governance structure. And so I, I just want to clarify that Lumio as a platform is going to be used at a variety of intervals between now and the end of that project, which concludes later this year and, and following the workshop that we'll host in August to facilitate conversation. This isn't necessarily a platform to facilitate how we collaborate as an institution on an ongoing basis. Really, there's a number of intervals and, and stages of a process that Anthony will hopefully explain a little in a little more depth that will take us from where we are today to the outcomes that we have promised for through our project to our funder and the hope is that at each stage we can use Lumio for a very specific purpose in facilitating discussion at a specific level and we'll take the results of that discussion um, synthesize it and with the various groups that we form you know we have this broader network we also have a core team the various committees that Anthony mentioned as well as 30 to 40 people who will arrive at our workshop with a very specific uh, mandate around taking what we have developed up until August to the next level and then casting that back out to the broader community. So I just wanted to introduce that context so we're clear what the, 
why Lumio has been introduced and that really what you see in there right now and the openness of the, the, the conversations and the questions are really just a reflection of what we're trying to generate at this very moment. It's a first stage of development. Thanks, Randy. So uh, let, let's proceed, Fyodor, and, and keep going. We've just got a few and minutes left, way, so I, I want to make it would be great to um, you know, have it someplace like a clear boundaries about like who makes decisions and how, and so uh, what are the boundaries for discussions, and who's invited to what, and what you would do with this data. Um, so that would be awesome. Anyway, so I'm clicking Sorry. on send. Uh, yeah, are we yeah. ready? To okay. I, I was just going to say to, to respond to that question. So we we are. This is an open call for people's perspective, for mm -hmm. questions that as input to the to the deliverables that Randy's just reiterated and uh, those will emerge out of a combination of this um, the people participating in these in this call and the, and the people who will be at the event in August of which there is a significant amount of overlap between those two uh, but mm -hmm. obviously we've got many more people in the LinkedIn group than we'll be able to physically have in in the room in, in August Okay, awesome. go ahead, click on the button. All right, so ju just a recap. Um, I uh, edit Manuel Manga right here um, as uh, an external stakeholder we're inviting. You know, hopefully he will join the main conversation as well. Um, so, and members um, of Applied Research Agenda are here by default. So I'm sending this right now to invite people to join this discussion. And the new topic has been created, okay? I guess the last, mm -hmm. A uh, piece that Anthony you asked me to do is to um, comment in the main discussion, right? Is that in, to, to one of the other one of the other topics that appeals to you? So if, again, in the the applied research agenda subgroup, if you click on that. Uh, oh, not not ha having useful discussions and reaching conclusions. Oh yes, yes, yes. So sorry, go ahead. Yes, you're right. Sorry, my mistake. Correct. Yes. Nice. Okay. So, um, I'd be happy to share some ideas about uh, using collective narrative methodology for... So while Fyodor's typing there, um, I just wanted to highlight on the right here that we've got a range of different decision tools. So one of the things that you could do um, if when you're making a suggestion about uh, the applied research agenda or the governance framework or, or measurement framework uh, is you could write your question in terms of a proposal that other people could comment on. So you could word it as, as Manuel, uh, as Fyodor's just been doing this time, uh, as just a straightforward question uh, or a straightforward statement, then people can just react in sort of natural language. But there are these tools on the right here that you could also use to get other people's perspective, right? You know, how many people think this is a good idea? whatever topic X is, and you could use one of the tools on the right in order to start to gather uh, other people from the network and get their comments around that. So, Yeah, and I, um, okay, I can uh, also um, like Michael Sillen, right? There we go. So Mike, I, Mike, Mike, thank, thank you, Michael, for also online, Berlin, okay. Exactly. So, so th this gives us an opportunity to start to uh, ha have a discussion. As Fyodor correctly said, this is just part of the building of, of the necessary uh, relationships. Okay. Um, I want to respect the fact that we said we would finish uh, in just a couple of minutes. So I just want to wrap up with a couple of other points. So I'm just going to take back the sharing um, just to uh, remind people how this is going to unfold over the next months. Back to Zoom. Where's my Zoom gone? Uh, so sharing the screen here. Some comments on the uh... Okay. Okay, so uh, as I mentioned, uh, stage one, we're gathering input, asking each other questions, using Lumio, uh, as mentioned, uh, creating a welcoming and, and safe space, uh, light moderation. Um, you will see me post as me when I've got something to say as a member of the community, and then you'll see the moderator which is myself, uh, Stephen, Peter, Nicole, Randy, uh, posting if we think that there's some activity where it needs uh, some moderation to, uh, for some reason. Um, as uh, you know, it's just demonstrated, this is to open to all 1,550 SSBMG group members from LinkedIn and any friends and colleagues that you think need to be involved in either specific conversations or in the entire uh, process. Um, and uh, we're 
we, what we've included in Lumio is just some very high level questions to provoke you to think about what's our current situation, uh, what sort of inquiry and discussion could be useful and what sort of dreams of what could be do we need to have. And um, you know, just reiterating again, going back to uh, Deming and quality, um, this question asking process is a way of us stimulating each other to think about what is it that the FEI needs to do in order to uh, meet its mission and, and how can it best go about doing that. So um, next steps. So we just we talked through Lumio. Um, so uh, some other dates for your calendars. Uh, so obviously today was uh, the launch of uh, stage one. Uh, we're going to do a checkpoint in a month's time. Um, I, I know I'm personally going to be challenged over the next month because I'm traveling for most of it. Uh, but I'll try and, and get engaged myself. So I'm hoping other people also get engaged. Um, and then um, we have a special meeting of the SSBMG uh, Thursday, August the 15th, uh, 9 to 11, uh, where David Cooperider will be giving a keynote that will launch the face-to-face -face process. Um, and um, you're also, uh, all SSBMG members are welcome to come to that face-to-face uh, uh, um, -face kickoff uh, that David is, is giving uh, because it's going to be in a large public auditorium. The meeting itself uh, is by invitation and uh, you can talk to Randy and myself about that if, if that's something that uh, you, you feel that you should be engaged in, in if you haven't already uh, received an invitation. Um, the, um, the, the uh, September and October's SSBMG meeting uh, will be back to our normal format of members sharing with each other uh, work that they are doing. Um, I, I've got some people who are thinking about talking in September and October, so I'm having conversations with uh, people to reach out to me uh, to uh, if you've got some, something you'd like to share with the group at that point. Uh, and then in November, we'll um, do a, a start to do a formal walkthrough of the final deliverables, hopefully, if we're on schedule and uh, we've managed to uh, meet our own timelines. Um, so there'll be another opportunity uh, to, for us to interact more formally uh, uh, in November and again we're thinking about using Lumio to help us have discussions about the documents uh, around uh, around this time as well uh, with the idea that by the end of November we would have those deliverables ready um, and complete. Um, so if you want to come in August uh, or um, it's uh, the, here's the address uh, where the meeting will be from uh, 10 to uh, 9 to 11 um, and we will also live stream it at the normal Zoom URL. Um, and for those who want to learn a little bit more about David's background, um, there was a post uh, of this article uh, to the LinkedIn group um, uh, some time ago, and the URL for that post is, is there. Um, and that gives you a sense of where David's coming from in terms of uh, flourishing uh, organization. And I think, yes, that is, that is indeed, uh, I, I will stop at that point. Um, Happy to continue the conversation, but we are at the, the end time for the meeting. Uh, so um, if anybody needs to leave, then that's perfectly okay. If anybody would like to continue the conversation, uh, happy to sit here for uh, a little while and, and do that as well. So thank you all for your participation. Thanks for playing along and look forward to hearing all of your ideas online in Lumio uh, over the next four weeks and then to do a check-in with everybody at uh, second Tuesday in uh, July. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> so, any, any uh, happy to have an informal discussion with anybody who would like to online or, or here. And and as as usual, I'm I'm. If anybody would like to go and have a drink or something, I'm happy to uh, with anybody who would like to now, as well. I need it. It's such a beautiful day. It is. Yes, we can <laughs> we can find a patio. Yes, exactly. it's a Rex. Yeah. Uh, Carl, you, if you're talking, you're on mute. You need to unmute yourself first. Hold on, let me see if I can unmute you. There we go. There I am. Um, a thought that I, occurred to me is uh, based on some of the comments in the room there, and then uh, Randy had, had something. You know, the, the way the goal might be said as have encouraging conversation about what's important to talk about. And one way that the group could, could attract attention uh, would be simply to um, start to be a data collector of opinions about 
say, uh, employees, investors, vendors or, uh, of a company ha have a set of questions that um, just allows an organization to assess how happy um, stakeholders are about its sustainability profile. Make it anonymous, uh, offer it as a service for organizations to, to pull, and then anonymize that data as it gets to a critical amount where you, we can start to say, this, this is how organizations are feeling about supply chains, about uh, accountability, and, 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 and make the goal not necessarily to come up with the right solutions because this is a very complex and individualistic set of issues, but rather be the, uh, uh, the catalyst for expanding discussion about what's important for sustainability and, and to whom. And how, because there's gonna be variation by country, by stage of development, established companies versus startups. Um, so that's that's the, that's the big idea. So, so th th thanks, Carl. So, so um, um, for, for for some topics, um, and, and I would certainly say some of our um, some initial answers to the questions that uh, that you've just made have started to be answered over the last seven years by members of the group. Um, so in this particular case, the Future Fit Business Benchmark. Uh, I, I don't know if you've heard of that. Uh, I've just put the name of it into the chat. Um, I would say is the project of members of the SSBMG that has started to answer that. And uh, we're encouraging all of the projects of members of the SSBMG to join the conversation on Lumio to contribute, um, to say, you know, what are the gaps between what they've already done and what needs to happen going forward? Um, and so, uh, and I'm not, not trying to suggest that it's complete or that it's, um, uh, that other things aren't uh, possible, uh, but I would suggest that that would be a good place for you to go and look at to start with, and then maybe you, you can then integrate some of the questions you've got with where they already are. Okay. Can I? Yep, of course. Uh, is there a business model behind the institute? Uh, um, well, it, I mean, it's, it, thank you, thank you, thank you, panelists. Uh, um, so the, 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 short under, the, sh the short answer is it has to raise the funds to do the work. So the business model is that it's based on funding? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Well, so, so can never the business model doesn't right. exist because it was intended to be part of what we produce through this process, right? Part of it is the governance structure, it's the research agenda, it's, it's how we organize the nodes. I mean, the business model was intended to be something that we develop organically and with the input of the collective in order to serve the collective. Yeah. Okay. So, so there is the possibility of actually having a business model somehow. Yeah. Well, it's going to be we're, one of we're the gonna, we're going to have a business, business model. model but, there. No, no, of course, we're going, to, <laughs> we're going to have a business model. Every organization has a business model. I mean, that's our, that's our understanding. That um, is not entirely, because currently from what I'm sensing, it's yes. like every node has to somehow you know, shake the booze around their, you know, their locality and find funds. And so, that's so, so whether that's, whether, whether that's sponsorship or whether that's um, uh, funds from uh, public and private sources or whether um, it's uh, um, uh, other, other revenue mechanisms, if we're just looking at the revenue side of the business model. I am looking at the revenue side of the business model. Right. I'm thinking about the implications for other, we're thinking about the canvas, right, right. So, so, books and how that would look like and what sort of partnerships you would need, what sort of right. IP is generated from the institute, who owns that IP, and yep. that's enough for three kids to there. Yes, absolutely. <laughs> uh, so all of that has to be talked about and, not, uh, and, and so we're not including or excluding any particular possibilities at this point. That's all got to emerge uh, overall. So my earlier comment was really trying to say, yes, there needs to be revenue, of course. Right. right. Absolutely. Any other questions, concerns, thoughts? Flag. All right, I'll, I'll yeah, call it to a close at that. Oh, sorry. Yeah, just. No, just, go ahead. Yeah, thank you. Yeah, just uh, again, I was uh, thinking about um, the need to. I mean, to me personally, I would love to um, 
uh, kind of have more conversations for relationship with folks. I mean, I know some people here, like, uh, you know, I saw uh, Carlos writing in the chat, um, you know, hi, Fyodor, you know, I, hello, Carl. So I know Michael, um, I now know Randy, uh, not from email, but from actual, well, like, virtual conversation and a bunch of other people and obviously, you know, John Ehrenfeld and, um, you know, like, uh, I don't know if you remember our conversation three years ago. Uh, I know that Manuel is a big fan of yours. Um, so, and that's great. And that gives me like a lot of energy to be, show up in this space and feel like home and contribute. And I'm not sure that everybody whom you invite will have the same feeling at the very beginning, especially if the first thing they see is Lumio. Just throwing it out there and then let's see. Yeah, yeah. No, I, I, I hear you. So we're, uh, I mean, that's why we, it's exactly, you've just uh, highlighted one of the many reasons why we have a monthly meeting where we try and get together as a community. Um, and um, that's why we're going to have this check-in in a month's time. Uh, you know, we're, we're, we're doing what we can with what we have. Uh, that old, that old chestnut. Okay, cool. Okay, everybody. Uh, I, thank you all for joining and uh, thank you, uh, Fyodor, for playing along. That was very helpful. Uh, and uh, look forward to uh, seeing and interacting with uh, all of you on Lumio over the coming days and weeks. Terrific. Thank you, everybody. Bye bye, everybody. Bye bye. 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 Thanks, Anthony.